Hello guys, welcome to this lesson and today I'm going to take you through a very interesting topic on angles. We're going to start with, we're going to look at how angles are formed, types of angles, calculation on angles. And so to be able to discuss all those, let's start with lines. There are two types of lines in this case, intersecting lines and parallel lines. So starting with intersecting lines, these are lines which meet at the point of intersection. On the other side, we have parallel lines and these are lines which will never meet. And they are shown using arrows. Okay. When two lines meet, or rather intersect, two pairs of vertically opposite angles are formed. And this is illustrated below. Two lines are intersecting to give us four angles A, B, C, and D. And we have angle A equal to angle C. This means that angle A is vertically opposite to angle C. Same to angle B is equal to angle D. And that means that angle B is vertically opposite to angle D. So the implication is vertically opposite angles are equal. Moving to perpendicular lines, so perpendicular lines normally meet at 90 degrees and therefore in this case angle A, B, C and D each is equal to 90 degrees. Therefore lines that intersect at right angles are perpendicular lines. The distance from a point to a line so the question is, what is the shortest distance from a point to a line? The point, we have, a, we have our point to be point O and the line below it. And now, the shortest distance from a point to a line is always the perpendicular distance. Let's now move to angles. And now when two angles Sorry, when two lines meet at a point, an angle is formed. So we have two lines and the angle between, which is angle A. But it's very important to know how angles are labeled. So we label angles using lowercase letters or Greek letters, e.g. Theta. That takes us to types of angles. We have several, but I'm just going to take you through a few of them. One is acute angle. So these are angles which are less than 90 degrees. And we have angle A is an example of an acute angle. Number two is right angle. This is an angle which is equal to 90 degrees, as you can see in the diagram. Number three, obtuse angle. Angle which are greater than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees, as shown in the diagram. Four, reflex angle. This is an angle which is greater than Eight, 180 degrees, sorry, and less than 360 degrees. Next, angles on a straight line and angles at a point. Starting with angles on a straight line, these are angles which add up to 180 degrees. So, angle A, B, C 
lie on the line below. And so angle A plus angle B plus angle C is equal to 180 degrees. Angles at a point add up to 360 degrees. Angle A, B, C, and D are angles at a point. And when you add angle A plus angle B plus angle C and plus angle D is equal to 360 degrees. Moving to complementary and supplementary angles. Complementary angles add up to one add up to 90 degrees, sorry. And now we have angle A in the diagram plus angle B will get 90 degrees. So we say A is complement to angle B. Supplementary angles are angles adding up to 180 degrees. Angle A and B lie on a line and a straight line for that matter. Now angle A and angle B gives us 180 when added together. So angle A is supplement to angle B. Angles made with parallel lines. So here we say that when a straight line crosses two parallel lines, eight angles are formed. Now we want to see these eight angles. We have a transversal, which is a line cutting through parallel line. And so the first four angles, A, B, C, and D, the last, we now make it eight in total, angle E, F, G, H. And so those are eight angles in total. Let's now move to corresponding angles, alternate angles, and interior angles. Corresponding angles to start with are angles In summary, corresponding angles are equal, and this is illustrated in the diagram below. We have angle A and angle B, and they are corresponding to each other, and therefore, angle A is equal to angle B. To identify that, you look for an F shape. Next, alternate angles. They are equal and this can be illustrated in the diagram below. Angle A and angle B, they lie on a transversal and so you can say that angle A is alternate to angle B, meaning angle A is equal to angle B. To identify that, look for a Z shape. Next, interior angles, they add up to 180 degrees. And we have angle A and angle B. When you add angle A and angle B, you get 180 degrees. So to be able to identify interior angles, you look for a C or a U shape. So let's now move to our last bit of the question of the lesson, calculating angles. Calculate the size of angle A and when you look at angle A, it lies in the middle. To be able to calculate the size of angle A, we need another parallel line, which is our hint. And now, the parallel line divides angle A into two. 
say a1 and a2. So a1 is alternate to angle 28. A2 on the other side is alternate to angle 45. And therefore, angle A is equal to 28 plus 45, giving us 73 degrees. So guys, this is the end of our lesson. Subscribe to this channel for more videos and on the comment section, place your comment.